Electrify America seems to be updating their chargers to the Alpatronic HYC400s. If you're familiar with Electrify America, you might know them for their lack of reliability and usability. On the flip side, you might know Alpatronic for their reliability, high power, and scalability. This is huge news. Electrify America was founded in 2016, unveiled in 2017, then put online with the first charger in 2018. It is the largest public DC fast charging network in North America, and people rely on Electrify America to DC fast charge across the country. Of course, we have other ChargePoint operators from the likes of ChargePoint and EVgo, which provide DC fast charging sessions as well. But Electrify America has been known to be the main provider of that. Now, the biggest issue has got to be their hardware and their reliability. Now, in 2018, their initial chargers and cabinets and dispensers were supplied by SK Signet, ABB, BTC Power as the hardware providers, the manufacturers that were then installed to build Electrify America stations. Now, these first generation chargers from Electrify America, built from like 2018 to 2020, had separate cabinets, 150 kilowatts max. They were built by ABB, BTC Power, SK Signet. And the biggest issue we saw was failure in high heat. They didn't seem to take heat very well. And then when they did fail, Electrify America didn't seem to be on top of it in terms terms of repairing these stations. And so this kind of started the the view that we see Electrify America in of being kind of unreliable. Then in 2021, Electrify America introduced their second generation chargers, which are built by SK Signet, as well as BTC Power, 350 kilowatts max. There was longer cables, load sharing between cabinets. Only issues that we really saw with these were, again, the maintenance issues that Electrify America really didn't keep up with them, as well as D-rated sessions. D-rated charging speeds could be seen as pretty common on these chargers. And so as a whole, whether it's the first generation or the second generation chargers, Electrify America has had some reliability issues. Again, the hardware itself isn't really the problem. It's the lack of maintenance of Electrify America keeping up with it, especially regionally. It also just makes sense for Electrify America to update their hardware, not only because they're growing at an extremely fast pace. They saw 50% more charging sessions in 2024 than 2023. More EVs are being bought. That means more EVs on the road. That means more EVs are going to need to DC fast charge and Electrify America, as I've already mentioned, really is the face of that for public DC fast charging. They supplied a 65% increase in the amount of gigawatt hours supplied. You have to imagine all of the high voltage EVs, the EVs with these giant battery packs, they're gonna need more power at higher speeds. This is just better equipment. The Alpitronic HYC 400 is built for that. Now enter the Alpatronic HYC 400, right? This is an all-in-one design. There's no external cabinet that has to be used. 400 kilowatt peak output. And so for our high voltage, these are higher power EVs. This is going to be great. This is going to be future-proofing some of the hardware that Electrify America uses. These chargers also have dynamic power splitting, meaning one car could be getting 150 kilowatts while another is getting 250 kilowatts on the same charger at the same time. Now, how could this fix Electrify America's reliability as well as their reputation? Now, a lot of charge point operators are now using Alpitronics HYC 400 from Mercedes, IANA, BP Pulse, uh, Circle K. Just more and more charge point operators and charging networks are going to be using the HYC 400. And with Alpitronics known reliability, it's gonna make people trust Electrify America a little more if they're using these Alpitronic HYC 400s. On the flip side, dealing with Alpitronic itself, the HYC 400, right? We said no split system. So if something's wrong with the cabinet itself, you're not going to see a problem with multiple chargers down. The HYC 400 is noted to have better cooling. Alpitronic has better scalability. They also have internal diagnostics, which is a huge part of this. Alpitronic is able to see pretty much all of their chargers, what their performance is like, and they can see if something is wrong before Electrify America and help fix that 
before you know a charger becomes down if a charger is down make sure someone is out there to help remedy that and this is just going to improve honestly electrify america's reliability if this is implemented well i am excited 400 kilowatts peak better reliability this is an exciting moment now the interesting thing about these chargers unlike the current electrify america dispensers which are using mainly ccs1 of course the first generation which electrify america still leaves at some of their stations also have chatamo but ccs1 is the main charger that is being used on these chargers here it actually seems like electrify america has next cables installed, a J3400. And this is great news as we see the rollout of J3400 vehicles. We already have the Lucid Gravity, the 2025 Hyundai Ionic 5, the other Kia Hyundai vehicles will be getting native NACs as well. A lot of more cars are going to be getting native NACs and having the infrastructure that supports it outside of Tesla is going to be super important. We also see like Iona, which has native NACs at their chargers. Now this first Electrify America station with these Alpetronic chargers was spotted in Orlando, Florida at Orlando Mall. This station has been down for quite some time, I think about two months at this point, and now we know why. It's because uh, Electrify America was putting in these Alpetronic uh, chargers. Now you'll see here that there seems to not only be CCS1, J3400 as well. Current Electrify America chargers, dispensers use CCS1. Of course, the first generation also had Chatamo to support cars like the Nissan Leaf. It would be kind of crazy if we saw Chatamo on these Alpitronic HYC400 chargers. I think that'd be pretty funny. But we need reliable charging networks outside of Tesla with J3400, and Electrify America can be just that. And so it looks like we're seeing here, right? CCS1 as well as J3400, two cables per stall. And so you have one charger here in the middle. This is going to be 400 kilowatts, a dynamic splitting in 50 kilowatt increments. You can have load sharing between two vehicles and whether it's a J3400 car, like a Lucid Gravity, the lineup of Hyundai and Kia vehicles that have or are getting J3400, or you're a CCS1 vehicle, you will have the cable for it. And that's why we're seeing four cables at these chargers. It's not because it's gonna be able to power four vehicles, it's just two parking spaces per charger, but it'll allow each vehicle to pick between J3400 or CCS1. We can go to plug share here and you'll see beginning Monday, February 10th, 2025, the chargers at this location will be temporarily unavailable as we work on providing the latest technology to drivers. What does that mean? Likely updating these chargers here. And of course you can see the previous, right? Chargers that Electrify America was using. One, two, three, four, five, six stalls, right? Each dispenser only provides power to one car. And then you go over here to the Alpatronic image, right? One, two, three, four, five. It seems to be six stalls. Uh, it doesn't it doesn't seem like we're getting the full picture of what the station looks like. Maybe there are other uh, HYC 400s installed. But, right, there were six stalls here before. Now it looks like there are just going to be same six um instead of having to install right six individual dispensers they can install three hyc 400 chargers and right it just improves scalability because they don't have to install as much equipment and i can imagine decreased cost for them as well on a as I've already mentioned, Alpatronic has a huge track record. They are the hardware provider for BP Pulse, Circle K, Iona, and we're seeing other charge point operators start to use Alpatronic hardware as well. They have a huge track record in Europe. From like a year ago, they're reporting more than a million sessions every single week that more than 50,000 ports installed in Europe. And that's where Alpitronics, right, main business started is and, and was Europe. Uh, but I think we could start to see them scale. And I mean, we are seeing them scale and get bigger in North America. I wonder what this means for other EVSE hardware providers from the likes of ABB, uh, Tritium, uh, BT 
SC Power, SK Signet, right? They're seeing a lot of their market share be eaten by Alpitronic, and for a good reason. Alpitronic, again, great reliability, great service. They have the internal diagnostics. They have the scalability to provide chargers for these companies. If they are on a, a price parity competitive, then I don't see why you wouldn't pick the Alpitronic HYC lineup, particularly the 400. And so I think we could be moving to a future where it's just a handful of charging providers, right? A lot of the competition eventually gets phased out. We know Tesla makes their own chargers. Same thing for Rivian. EVgo also uses chargers from the likes of Delta and BTC and SK Signet. Of course, ChargePoint has their own chargers. And then it seems like all the other CPOs could just be using uh, Alpatronic. And that could be the future. And I don't think that's a bad future. Look, it's great to see Electrify America invest in better hardware, but can they execute? I think the biggest concern is going to be how Electrify America starts rolling out these chargers. When we saw the transition from generation one to generation two, really, it's like really like a 2.5 or 1.5, but the next generation of Electrify America chargers, some stations were down for months at, on end. And in some instances, they were like the only chargers for quite some time. And so of course, times have changed. There are a lot more public charging networks and stations available, but Electrify America still is one of the right main sources for DC fast charging. So like we saw right on the Orlando, the Florida mall, that charger has been down for more than a month. If you need to charge and there's no other chargers nearby, where would you go? So I would like to see how quick Electrify America, right, executes in installing these chargers as well as how fast it's going to take as a whole. Will we see pretty much every Electrify America station be replaced with these HYC 400? Is it going to be regional? Or are we just going to see new stations? Of course, right, we see this station here, which was a, an existing station be replaced. But I wonder what the parameters Electrify America is using for replacing their chargers with the HYC. HYC 400 is. Will this fix Electrify America's reliability problem? I think so, but we'll see. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. As an EV driver, as one myself, this is a huge moment and I'm pretty excited. The rollout is going to be the most interesting part. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is the Out of Spec Bits channel. My name is Isaiah and I will see you guys in the next one.